Welcome everyone to another episode of Real Estate Ladies of North Atlanta, Mary Ellen Vinokin and Susan Jennings. And we are going to talk about how to get your home ready for a showing when you list it. All right. How are you today, Sue? I'm doing great. How are you, Mary Ellen? I'm doing great. So let's talk about this very important uh, situation that we need to do. Right, right. So we want to make a positive impression when we, you know, open the front door and, and have our buyers come through our homes. Okay, let's, let's talk about what we're we going to talk about. Let's okay, talk well, about... we're going to talk about cleaning and decluttering, depersonalizing. Uh, we're going to talk about making repairs, enhancing your curb appeal, staging the interior, maximizing natural light, creating a welcoming atmosphere, securing ah. your val valuables and your pets. Ah, those are some important stuff. So let's talk about the clean and decluttering. So let's let's just talk a little bit about clean. So everyone has a different cleaning, mm -hmm. what they consider clean. So my suggestion is to get a professional cleaner to come in and deep clean your house before we have a showing, before we list it, before we right. take photos. Right. And the reasoning behind that is you just want them to deep clean the house, get it in really good shape um, because a clean house, I mean, people will, you know, they love clean houses. They love the smell of it. They love everything about clean houses. So that, right. that would be my number one suggestion of talking about on the clean side. Right. What, do you suggest anything else? Oh, and I think, um, you know, washing windows and, and, and uh, having them get into the tall lighting fixtures and fans and things like that. So I think that that is the cleaning I would totally suggest. Yeah. I, I, um, have this real aversion to spiders and spider webs. And I think most buyers do too. So when you're cleaning, don't forget to clean the outside of the house as well. Um, hire someone to do some pressure washing and get some, some of those high level areas above front doors and around above garage doors, mm -hmm. up along your gutter line where spiders might be uh, creating some webs and just creating dirt on the outside of the house as well. Right. And we also, you know, we also have problems with uh, bees this time of year. You know, there's bees and carpenter bees and all that kind of stuff. So just make sure that's kind of taken care of, because the worst thing can happen is if you got like a little beehive and by your front door and bees start coming out. We wouldn't want right. that to happen now, would we? No, we don't. We don't. <laughs> all right. So talk a little bit about decluttering. Um kind of some tidbits of what you would suggest for people to do. Right. So I always recommend that you pick up things like little throw rugs. Um, they're just not necessary. They are tripping hazards for people in a home that when somebody comes in your home, they, we want them to look up. We want them to look around. We don't want them to be looking at their feet all the time, yes. uh, watching, you know, everything that, that uh, is beneath them. So let's make it easy for them. And let's pick up the little throw rugs. And also, uh, if you've got, you know, a million books, or you've got a million plants, or, you know, yeah. just a lot of kids toys, things like that, you're going to be moving anyway. So go ahead and start packing those things up. Yeah. And store them somewhere, either in a garage or a basement mm -hmm. where they're tucked out of the way. Yeah, good idea. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, just get rid of a lot of stuff. So I would say just take half of your stuff and, you know, put it yeah. in storage. Yeah, knickknacks you know? are a real, they're just not needed when we're selling your home. So go yeah. ahead. And Less is those better. Out. Less is better. Right. right. It'll make your home feel more spacious. It'll make it feel bigger. It'll make it feel more light filled just by uh, getting rid of all the excess things that you really don't need. And it'll make your moving easier ultimately. Yeah, because you're going through the stuff before you're even packing up. You know, I mean, you're right. kind of going through that stuff as you're preparing your house to be listed. You're getting rid of that kind of stuff. Right. So, you know, no. get rid of those photos and those, you know, personalized items that you have, you know, sitting around and stuff, you know. I, I call that the three D's of uh, real estate. Okay. De clean, declutter, depersonalize. 
Oh, that's that's a great way to to really go to it. The three D's. So the three D's. Mm -hmm. That's what we're gonna do. Right. All right. Well, what are we gonna do next? Well, we're going to look at our home and see what needs to be repaired. I, are there any items that, you know, are maintenance tasks that are overdue that need to be taken care of, such as leaky faucets, repairing chipped paint, um, broken light fixtures. Uh, also, uh, we want all the light bulbs to be working. Mm -hmm. So go around and with a new package of light bulbs and make sure all your light bulbs are the, the they're all the same color, first of all, and that they're all working. Yes. And um, it's interesting how people will just replace a light bulb and not notice that it's a different color from the light in the another light bulb in the same fixture. Right. Or um, a different kinds, you know, like right. they have all these different kinds of, of light bulbs now. So, yes, I, I agree. Definitely. Right. That's that's important. So a lot of these things are just simply cosmetic. They're not expensive items, but they do show that your home is well maintained and a buyer will have a better impression of the home by, you know, you know, not having distractions of things that just aren't necessary. And you don't know, you don't want a, mish, a mishmash of like door hinges and door open, you know, like your brass here and black here. And you just want to make sure everything's actually continuity throughout the whole house is really important. And, you know, if you have knobs on your kitchen cabinets, make sure that they're kind of, you know, not so, so old. I, I would say just keep them in what the trends are. We're not going to, we don't want like our grandmas and great grandmas, you know, little knobs on our, um, our kitchen, you know, cabinet. Right. 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 So those are easy you know, fixes, easy yeah. fixes. Well, one thing we want to do is put the buyer's hat on and, um, you know, look at it with a fresh set of eyes you know, we know that we've lived there for many years. We've loved the home. It's been our family home. But when we put the house on the market, it really is open to the world. And we need to look at that with a fresh set of eyes. Yeah, no, I agree. And also, like, another thing that is is kind of uh, is those electrical plates that are all over your house, like the ones that, you know, put some get some new ones. They're so inexpensive at Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace or wherever you, you can order them on Amazon if you want to, too. And just, right. I, I mean, just make them, you know, we don't want ones that are faded and just make it a little more trendy. I think that really goes a long way when you, when you walk into a house and you see it's kind of clean and slick. Right. Right. Yeah. Just, um, I know we all watch HGTV. We don't expect your house to look like HGTV necessarily, but, um, you know, we do want it to look clean, tidy, spacious, and, you know, picked up. We, we don't want to see sneakers all over the floor and children's toys all over the floor. And also, one of the things that people need to remember is that when your home's on the market, you need to make your bed each day because you never know when you're going to get a showing request for someone to come through in an hour or two hours. And you always want to make sure that you're ready to go. Yeah. And also if you are like the type of person that you want people to take off their shoes before they come in the house mm -hmm. or put on little bo booties, we need to know that too. So we can write a little note and put it in, uh, put it right there when they walk in the door to, you know, take their shoes off and, and uh, cause you don't want people running around with Georgia clay on their feet and, you know, destroying your nice clean house that you just, you know, had all cleaned up for showing. Right. 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 And if possible, when you're you've you're home and you've gotten a notice that you're going to have a showing, make sure you go around and open your blinds, um, make sure that there's plenty of light in the room and make sure you've turned on your lights and picked everything up, tucked things away. You can hide things in the dryer, for goodness sakes. Most buyers aren't going to look inside your dryer. Um, and you can just make sure your dishes are done, that there aren't any in the sink and you know, the house looks fresh. Yeah, fresh is important. The worst is when you go in a house and someone just cooked cooked a meal and they got their dishes there and it just turns you off, right? right. So um, do you want to go into smells of the house? Like what, you know, what, what you suggest? I mean, honestly, um, uh, you don't want a strong scent if you're going to burn a candle before showings or whatever. You want something that's, that's really light. You don't want any heavy duty, 
smells in a home because people will think you're covering up things. My favorite thing to do is to take some chocolate chip cookies, put them in the oven, let that smell go out throughout the house. And that puts, and leave chocolate chip cookies for your clients. That's for, mm -hmm. for your um, potential uh, people, buyers that are coming in the, in your property. If you do have time to do that, a lot of people, that's really old school, but honestly, I think it's just a great touch. And, and some, some sellers will put little waters out or the agents will put little waters out um, mm -hmm. as well for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, we, before we even get inside the house, we have to talk about the curb appeal of the property and what we need to make sure that, you know, we're doing so that as a seller that the house is making a good first impression when Mr. or Mrs. Buyer drive up to the property. And, you know, I just always want to reiterate that it's important to keep the grass cut and the edge, you know, things trimmed and weeds pulled and put on a fresh coat of pine straw or mulch on your flower beds. Put some flowers at your front door, or pretty wreath on yes. the floor. Yeah. And, and the front door too. make sure it's painted or, you know, if, if it's, mm -hmm. you know, freshly painted. So it just looks fresh. Um, and then if you have, you know, uh, if you have a front porch and you have like furniture on there, make sure that furniture is clean. Because right. sometimes we forget that. And it, like during pollen season, mm -hmm. there's always going to be a lot of dirt and pollen on, on those those type of things that are on your porch. Just make sure you clean it up before um, you have a showing too as right. well. Right. Absolutely. So when we come in the front door, it's always very, very nice um, if the lights are already on. If they're not, I will go around and put the lights on for a buyer. But um, it's really better if the seller handles the lights in, in advance because I never like to touch anybody's lamps or anything like that. I will only touch wall switch switches to turn lights on. And some people um, don't have ceiling lights and they do need to put their lamps on and I will not touch somebody's lamps. So if the seller can go ahead and put yeah. those on in advance, that's very, very helpful. And um, I Go ahead. And I will say I like one more to thing see about open lights. Open curtains, natural light. Yeah. One more thing about lights is um, also when you're pressing buttons, sometimes you have no idea what that handles. And mm -hmm. that just drives me crazy because I, I don't know how these electricians do things in houses, <laughs> but it's like I'll press a button, I'll go, well, where's that light? And, and you know, we spend more time figuring out, well, that light's not on. Where is it? Where's the button? And we're, you know, we're just running around. And as you know, you're stressed out enough, you've got buyers you're walking through. If you're, you know, with the buyers, you're the with the buyers and they're like, oh, and you want it to look really nice. So if the seller can actually do that, it made, makes a huge difference. And I love when my sellers are like, all the lights are on. Can they turn them off after the showing? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, yeah, and, turning them off is is a whole different story than getting them on. How many times have you walked into a kitchen, flipped a switch, and you actually turned on the garbage disposal? Oh it's my a gosh, lovely that sound has to listen so to. many times, and you're like, oh, oh no, that's not good. <laughs> but that <laughs> def definitely has happened in in times because you don't know what all these buttons are, and you're just pressing them. And right. what I do tell my sellers too is that they'll say, oh, can you make sure they turn the lights off? Yes, but sometimes all the lights aren't going to be off just because I know I press all the buttons and, and I'm trying to find them and, and it's, you want to get to the next house and your client, you know, you're, you're on a time constraint. So sometimes it's a little stressful. So you kind of want to just say, um, you know, if there's some lights on, it's okay. Right. Right. A dark house is not an appealing house for any no. buyer to walk through. And, you know, that takes me right into my next concept or topic is about staging the home. So um, the sellers need to realize that even though there are creature comforts there that they like to use, you know, mm -hmm. in their TV room or whatever room it is, those things are not necessarily appealing to a buyer. And you need to, like I said, look at it through the eyes of the buyer. So if you've got, you know, a lot of extra clutter and footstools and a basket with all your remotes and, and just magazines everywhere, uh, too many pillows on the sofa even, and just it's just too much clutter. It's too much going on. And we we want the buyer to look at the, the bones of the property and look up and not be distracted by, you know, all the magazines sitting around and everything else. 
Sue, what about like, um, you know, putting some people put the TV on with soft music or mm -hmm. they'll like downstairs in the basement in their media room, they'll put the TV Absolutely. on. They should. Um, I think it just makes a good ambiance too. Like, I mean, that's a personal choice, but I do like when I go into a house and I hear some soft music and stuff. Right. Um, and if, just, if a home is either has uh, speakers throughout the home, is wired for it, not wired for it, Sonos, wireless, whatever it is, um, if music's playing, it makes the home much more relaxing, comforting, and inviting. Yeah, no, so that's a good one. So if you do have like, and everybody has, you know, TV where they can put like soft music on, or mm -hmm. you could talk to Siri, or you can talk to Google, and you know, you can just turn music on. Mm -hmm. And we could do that right now if we wanted to. I'm afraid if I say, okay, Google, then, uh, you know, <laughs> Google might start talking to me. So, um, so that's, that's kind of like an easy thing to do, too, that really makes a difference. I know that when I walk in a house and I hear that soothing music, it's just not a lot of people do it. So it's kind of kind of a good tip. I think it's a good tip. Right, right. Because we do get more lucrative offers with homes that are appealing to buyers. And we want homes to sell for the most amount of money in the least amount of time, ultimately. Right. So when we have a seller that has a vested interest in and helping us along with, you know, keeping the home tidy, clean, and picked up, it really does help. Yeah, yes, definitely, definitely helps when it's nice and clean. So we've created a welcoming atmosphere for our buyers, but the other thing we haven't talked about is securing valuables. Um, as okay. sellers, we don't want to see anybody lose anything or have anything broken. So we always recommend that if you have uh, a lot of Yadro pieces or something like that or crystal sitting around, maybe you should just wrap it in tissue, box it up, put it away for now. Um, you know, jewelry is another one. Maybe, you know, rent a safe deposit box at your local bank and put all of the your your silverware or your your jewelry in a box and just don't even have it there yeah. uh, for an invitation to anybody because we just never know. Yeah. Um, and safe, safe, like, uh, like a lot of people have safe deposit, have a safe in their house. So mm -hmm. I just say, put everything in the safe. Don't hide it uh, in, in the bathroom. You just never know. I mean, mm -hmm. people's open it, it it shocks me sometimes the things that people open up. They might open up the washing machine, Sue. I, I you know, but, you know, there's only so like. I mean, I it's it's amazing how they'll, especially in the kitchen, they love opening up the drawers and seeing oh, what's yeah. in there. They do. The refrigerator they do. and everything, and yeah. and like we can't really control what they do. I mean, we can watch them that they're not going to take anything, but right. it's just so interesting that people it's important for them to open up the refrigerator and open up the cabinets and and do they're going to do that in the bathroom and stuff and i know that a lot of people we have our jewelry in our bathroom you know because we're putting it on after our shower or whatever just put it in a, in in a safe you know right right yeah. well we you know if we're bringing a family through a home sellers need to understand that their parents of uh the children that are with us are interested in looking at the home. They're not necessarily watching their children every step of the way. And children will, you know, find toys and so forth that are out and they'll sit down and they'll start to play, which um, is a little bit of a sensitive subject with me because at one point I had a buyer um, that their little girl picked up a little green stuffed animal that she didn't want to put it down. She didn't want to put it back to leave the house. And then we ended up with a tr child that was crying and carrying on. And I understand that, you know, families that are selling homes, they have children, they can't put all the children's toys away and so forth, but maybe rotate those toys, only have certain ones out at a certain time. And the benefit of that to your child is they'll have something new to play with each time too. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great tidbit. Mm -hmm. I like that about, uh, about, cause you know, you're walking around a house and, and another thing that is really, really important that everybody needs to know is everybody has cameras everywhere. Just like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They have cameras inside the house, outside the house, they're listening, they're looking at your body language, they're looking mm -hmm. at everything. And um, we've had some sellers go, well, these kids were running around like a zoo, you know? And I was like, well, I can't control what the buyer's agent and their clients do, you know, um, 
And I think it's it's tough. It's a hard situation. But nowadays, I think that everyone has to understand that you are being taped, you are being watched, and people know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So just keep your mouth closed while you're <laughs> while you're inside the house. Right. And, and and also they they look they look at your body language. I mean, I have had clients who say, "Oh, those people who came in, they looked really interested from their body language." Or those people were in and out in like five minutes or two right. minutes. You know. Right. So so that's just another um, thing that's. Uh, and we don't think of, I think sometimes, because we're just so natural of voicing our opinion when we're inside mm-hmm. a house. And mm-hmm. now I've been just telling people, I think, you know, we're always going to be watched. <laughs> so let's let's just keep it till when we leave the house and then have a discussion about the house in there. Right, exactly. And, and one other thing that I know sellers always have an issue with, um, but, you know, we need to make sure everybody's safe and secure is pets. So, you know, if you are a seller and you have a dog, if you could possibly take the dog with you or secure the dog in an appropriate crate uh, in the home, that's really an ideal situation. Sometimes it's stressful for the pet to have strangers in the home. Mm -hmm. And if you feel that it's going to be stressful for your pet and your pet's going to be upset and bark and everything else, perhaps take the pet with you. Uh, or take the pet out for a walk or have a dog walker come in and walk the pet at the time of the showing. Um, Because it's very unpleasant to a buyer to be in a home and have the the dogs barking all the time. Um, You know, it's just distracting. And we also have to be aware of, of buyers coming in that maybe are allergic to cats. And the same thing, you know, if you can put your your cat in a carrier or take the the cat with you, that's a great suggestion. And how many times, Sue, how many times have you seen or heard stories where cats get out of the house, someone lets the cat out and then get all upset? And, and that's the thing, because you, sometimes they're so sneaky, those little cats, you just don't know where they are. They, do. they hide underneath yeah. They hide underneath couches, they they go around. And then, you know, also your dog, you can take them to like camp or you can take, we you know, we call it camp, right? To doggy mm-hmm. daycare, um, especially if you have a whole day of showings. And that just makes it more fun for the dog. They go to doggy daycare and then you can have all the showings during that time. So that's right. just another tidbit. But those cats... For some reason, people don't take their cats out of the house um, when they're showing. Um, But but you have to remember that we can't hold buyers or the buyer's agents responsible for a pet that escapes from a home for some reason. Yeah. Um, That's really the homeowner and the seller's, aka seller's responsibility to make sure their pets are secure. Yeah. And and, and one thing I don't, um, I don't like either when, uh, and, and this is, I always have this with our talk with our sellers is that, you no, know, you can't just put the dog and the cats in a room and lock the door because people want to see that room. Right, so exactly. that's just another thing. So if you can't do the showing, then we can reschedule it. So that's, right. that's important when it comes to the pets. Right. And, and as a seller, you can tell your agent, you know, I can't be there at this day between these hours. Can we please block that time yes. out so that we don't have showings during that time so that I can, you know, get the pets out an, at an appropriate time? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree 100 percent. I think it's mm-hmm. really important that you just have that open communication about pets and stuff. Right. And, and yeah, and move there, you know, when just as you're making a bed move all their food and water and stuff into the garage. You know what I mean? Just put it in there um, mm-hmm. because you don't want anyone tripping over that. Cause for some reason people don't see where they're walking and they'll trip over the water bowl. And we don't want to have a little disaster where there's water all over the, all over Plus the people's, floor. People's children love to play in that water bowl for some reason. I <laughs> see more little boys bend down and splash in that water and then get water all over the floor and everything. And you're having to clean up and you're having to like then go, okay, where's the paper towels or where's the towel that I can clean up? Because you don't want to leave it that way. So just, I mean, not to say this is going to happen when you show your property, but these are just stories that we've had. Is there any other kind of cool stories that you can tell us when you were showing a property? Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, your carpet may look really, really clean, but if you've had a dog all over, I guarantee you 
it probably smells like a dog and you don't even realize it. So have Stanley Steamer or some carpet company come in and, and maybe clean your rugs and all before we, we list the home. Um, it'll make the home smell so much fresher. The carpets will look so much fluffier and cleaner and just make your house look a lot better. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. So, and then what about like, so when a lot of people, when they're before the showings, they like to take out their vacuum cleaner and make it look really slick and clean. And then, <laughs> and like the buyers are afraid to walk on it. Cause they're like, Oh my God, that looks so cool. You know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so really if, if you don't have much time and you're, you've got a showing just like take your, you know, vacuum cleaner and, in in you know, in the carpet, make it look like, you know, very organized. I'm not organized like that with, with vacuum cleaner, but I know a lot of I'm people. I'm one of those people that loves those vacuum cleaner marks on the rug. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't have any rugs in my house. It's all hardwood, so I can't say what I like, but I know when I walk into a house and I see those lines, I'm like, right. that's cool. How do they do that? <laughs> right, right. So yeah, just another thing. And then people are afraid then to, to, to walk on it. And they're like, oh, wow. Right. So all in all, we just want to make sure that we're showing our, you know, sellers home in the best possible light, because we want to increase the number of potential buyers that want to place offers on the home. And we want a successful sale at the end of the day. Yeah. And remember, when people are looking at a property, where are they going to see it first online? So they're right. going to make that decision by looking at all the photos, looking at the videos, and, and you can definitely see when you're doing videos and you're doing photos, you can see how clean the house is and, and, and things. So they're going to say, hey, I've seen this online. I'm raising my hand to go see it. Mm -hmm. So remember, photos are so important and right. just everything that's online is important about that property because that's going to bring the people in to see it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me just uh, talk about, um, you know, showings, you know, like, um, you know, do I leave my, what, can I walk the dog and, and sit in my car? Yes, you can do whatever you want mm -hmm. to just leave the house, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Don't be in the house. You can leave the house. You can go next door, hang out with your, with your friends or whatever you want to do while the showings are happening. I've had people who, you know, every showing they go to their next door neighbor's house and they put their dog in the, in the fence there and they'd be looking around as they're seeing the house too. So <laughs> that does happen too. I guess stock in the stock in the uh, showings, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, they do that through their ring doorbells. <laughs> yes, that, that too. But I'm just saying like, I guess the you know, it's just like, just take the dog for a walk, take the cat for a walk, whatever, or just go in your car and drive down the street and you'll know when the people come and, 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 and we can't control if they say they're going to be there between 12 and 1230. Oh, they could they show up, at, you know, at, at between one and one thirty. I mean, yes, they make appointments, but people spend different amounts of time looking at the homes before and even the homes that they're going to look at after yours. And we, we really do the best we can to communicate and stay on schedule, but things happen. And, yeah. you know, oftentimes the schedule gets a little bit uh, messed up, frankly. And when there's multiple agents looking through, so usually what will happen is say you have an appointment at from 10 to 1030 and it's 1031 and the next appointment's there, they're going to have to wait for you to go through the house. Mm -hmm. And so you'll be in the house and come out and then the next appointment will come. And sometimes the agents get a little testy with you right. while you are running late. Um, if you're running late, uh, the best thing you can do is contact the listing agent and just let them know so that we can also give that information to our clients and see mm -hmm. if that's a good fit. Because if you're more than like, I'd say 15 minutes late for an appointment, then you need to tell the, um, the right. listing agent. Right. Because you don't want someone, you know, because they'll be waiting there. And what about, hey, I work from home. Well, How does that we, work, Sue? <laughs> sometimes we can't avoid it, but somebody does have to stay in the home because they've got a conference call or a call ran late or, you know, something happened at the office where they absolutely have to stay there. Um, we've run into that. It makes the buyers very uncomfortable when the sellers stay. 
Um, the buyers feel like they can't talk freely um, and they just feel like they need to rush past that room that that particular individual is sitting in. Um, I recently showed a house where the, the sellers were not there, but the seller had set the dining room up uh, as the office. And what was interesting about this home was the dining room was actually the only available eating area in the home. There was no kitchen, you know, eat-in kitchen area. So from a staging standpoint, if I had been their agent, I would have recommended that they maybe take over one of the bedrooms or a different area and stage that dining room back as a dining room. Because my buyers came in and they didn't even realize at first that that was the dining room in the home. And they were like, well, wait a minute, here's the office, here's the living room, here's the kitchen. There's no dining room in this house. There's no place to put a kitchen table. And I'm like, no, 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 that is the dining room. But they had this massive desk in the, in the dining room that took up the whole space with all these wires and cords and everything else. And we understand, you know, people need to work and they do work from home frequently. But I think from a staging standpoint, maybe that particular desk and so forth should have been moved to another room of the home so that when the buyers came in the first floor, they could really get a good visual of what the home's floor plan and layout really was. And by the way, that house um, was on the market a very long time. And I think that was part of the reason. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. And and and. If you have to work from home, we block those days off. We block off those times. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's just what we have to do. Or, you know, a lot of people can go work from a Starbucks or do something like that. So if you want to mm -hmm. sell your house and you're motivated to sell your house, you will make it work. And, and right. I love the motivated sellers, which majority, I would say 99.9% .9 of our sellers are motivated that they're proactive in, you know, even though I have a me, I'm going to go to Starbucks or I'm going to go here or whatever. If I have to work from home that day, because some people are working home from home all the time. And some people are just working a couple days, you know, so we can help and block off the schedule. And that's fine because if somebody wants to see your house, they will make time to see your house. Right. Right. But not totally restricted. Like, Oh, you only can see it between one and two on Tuesdays or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you have to make it, accessible to people to see. Right. Right. And then maybe that's why you have like an open house too. And that gives mm -hmm. another opportunity. If you are really constrained with your schedule and showings that right. maybe we just do, you just say, well, Hey, we'll do an open house and then make sure whoever was supposed to see it during the other times will come during that open house. Right. And open houses don't necessarily have to be on a Sunday. They can also be on a Saturday as well. So if one day of the week works better for your schedule as the seller, we will work around that too. And like we've had open houses where they're at nighttime during the week. We've seen open houses during school drop off. So mm -hmm. people would keep a house open between seven and nine in the morning when the when the parents were dropping the kids off of school. So I've seen all different kinds of times to keep open. So we can do right. open houses anytime. Right. So. And we often will also do agent open houses. And those are usually done during the week so that we can network with other agents in the area and show them your home. Because ultimately, agents are generally the ones that are going to bring the buyer in. Yes, absolutely. So um, any other information you want to give about how to, you know, get your house ready for a showing? No, just remember those three D's of deep clean, declutter, depersonalize, and of course, mow your lawn. <laughs> mow your lawn. Don't forget to mow Make your lawn. Make your bed. Power wash and, and have Do your dishes. Good. So, <laughs> because, because the first thing is online, then the second thing is curb appeal. And if they drive by and they don't like the curb appeal, they're not walking inside the house, then it's, then it's the front door. So they, you know, you have to make sure that it's, they're, they're not going to run into the house if they don't like the curb appeal. So, right. um, so I think that that's really important too. Well, thank you so much, Sue. Um, we're the real estate ladies of North Atlanta, and we love uh, to hear your feedback. If there's any other topics you'd like for us to discuss, we're happy to do that. And you all have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye. -bye.